Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game that was played yesterday uh, in one of the most prestigious events of the year in the Mr. Dodgy Invitational Tournament uh, 3.0 uh, and it's a game between Fide Master Kamil Plita of Poland and the world champion Magnus Carlsen. It's a blitz game. Uh, all of the games in this event are, are uh, blitz. It's 5 plus 0 so uh, incredible uh, time format uh, and no time for for. Her. Uh, second guesses and there is no increment which is especially important uh, I think uh, uh, for those of you who, who are maybe older 5 plus 0 is the absolute uh, uh, favorite uh, time control uh, and that's why uh, one of the reasons I think that so many uh, people uh, decided to play in this uh, prestigious event amongst other things uh, but let's check out the game uh, and it's uh, very interesting that uh, uh, the opening used in the game is actually the Trompovsky attack and uh, uh, Kamil has a chessable course on the Trompovsky, he has some other courses uh, and what better way uh, to test his knowledge of the Trompovsky than by facing world champion Magnus Carlsen. So let's see how it went. Uh, Kamil uh, has the white pieces and he opens with d4. We have knight to f6 by Magnus and the bishop to g5. This is the Trompovsky attack. Uh, and here, uh, for uh, example, knight to e4 is the main line against the Trompovsky. It has, depending on the database, you check about 10,000 games in the database with knight to e4 played. However, here Magnus, as he did in all of the games decided to go for sort of an ob uh, offbeat uh, continuation uh, something that really can't be fi uh, found in a database and he plays pawn to b5 and uh, <laughs> knight to e4 like we said some 10,000 games in the database pawn to b5 12 games in the database so it's uh, very hard to say, even though uh, Kamel made a adjustable course on the, Trom on the Trompovsky, uh, whether he actually checked the b5 move. Uh, but uh, especially this fact makes the game even more interesting. He goes for bishop captures on f6, g captures, and now pawn to e3. Okay, he strengthens his center, and he doubled Magnus's g pawn. But of course, Ma later on, Magnus will use the semi-open g file for his rook. Uh, bishop to b7, and now knight to f3. Uh, continuing development of of course, you cannot go for the b5 pawn, you will lose the g2 pawn. Uh, and there are some games where rook to g8 was played, but here we have pawn to a6, and it is now already as of move 5 that we have a completely new game. Uh, g4, uh, g3 by Kamel, preparing to fianchetto his light square bishop, and pawn to c5. Magnus strikes against the center, c3, and now pawn to e6. We have bishop to g2 and pawn to d5. We have castles, uh, and Magnus goes for knight to d7. So you can see that Magnus has a very strong setup in the center here. Knight b to d2, and now bishop to e7. We have rook to e1, and now Magnus castles. So he does have... Uh, at the G file uh, semi open, and uh, White could use this uh, for his attack, but with the position so, so closed, it's very hard to bring those pieces in front of Magnus's king. And there are basically two ideas here you want to play as White you want to go for the uh, queenside breakthrough, or you want to go for the central breakthrough. And Kamel goes for e4, he goes for the central breakthrough. Uh, we have rook to c8, and now e captures on d5. Uh, bishop captures on d5, and now pawn to a4. Uh, so first going for e4, then a4, uh, b4 by Magnus, and now pawn to c4, attacking the bishop, and here uh, the position becomes uh, very, very interesting. Uh, if the bishop goes back, for example, bishop to c6 or bishop to b7, uh, then d5 and the black can pretty much resign. There is no way to organize a defense for the black king. Uh, white will just play, well, let's say, capture here, knight to h4, queen to g5, check, knight to f5, and checkmate the black king. Uh, there are ways to prolong this, but all in all, white will uh white, white will be victorious here so instead magnus goes for bishop captures on f3 uh this is the absolute best way to do it knight captures on f3 and now c captures on d4 we have queen captures and now just knight to c5 uh offering a trade of queens with the knight now being on this beautiful outpost we have queen to g4 with check King to h8, now the rook can come to the g file and rook a to d1 you don't have to rush with uh, uh, bringing the queen over to the h file, uh, rook a to d1. This is, I believe, rook a to d1 is one of the most famous moves in chess in general, uh, played by Adolf Andersen in a very special game. So, whenever you play it, I, I feel that you, uh, you know, 
uh, get, get sort of a special feeling about the game. So okay, queen to c7, we have queen to h5, and now rook c to d8. Uh, and here, uh, rook captures on d8, another very, very important move by Kamel. Uh, problem is, if you go knight to h4, there's just no good way to organize an attack here. Let's say rook captures, rook captures, and now queen e5. Uh, black just forces um, a trade here. There's really not all that much uh, you you can do here. Uh, the, the queen is being threatened. And also, if you just move the queen, then you lose the b2 pawn. Then you allow black to create a passed b pawn. So this wouldn't be all that great. However, rook captures on d8. Uh, queen captures on d8. Uh, or you capture with the rook and then you lose the f7 pawn. So queen captures and now knight to h4. And this is the moment where the magic happens. Uh, uh, Magnus's position is objectively better. He has to play queen to d2, attack the b2 pawn, and pretty much whatever white plays, let's say rook to e2, queen g5, he offers a queen trade, uh, and he enjoys his position. However, in the game, uh, after this uh, knight to h4 move, Magnus played queen to d4, uh, again, going for the b2 pawn, but this allows Kamel to play uh, a spectacular winning move uh, that Magnus missed. So feel free to pause the video and win the game for Kamel while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting uh, the only winning move for Kamel. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight to f5. Basically, uh, this is where Kamel wanted to put his knight uh, <laughs> the entire game. It just wasn't possible until Magnus uh, played queen to d4. Now it's possible as uh, you don't really have a good continuation. Your queen is hanging and the bishop on e7 is hanging. And if you try to defend the bishop, look at this, just captures, captures, and bishop e4, and black can resign. Checkmate is being threatened. You cannot play f5 if f5 just bishop captures, and of course the e6 pawn is pinned. And if you try something like knight captures on e4, then rook captures on e4. And uh, in order to organize an attack against rook h4 and queen captures on h7, you're going to have to play rook to g8, rook to h4, rook to g7, and now you start pushing your past c pawn, and this will give enough, um, uh, well, this will be enough for white to just win the game very easily. Black is tied down here completely, uh, defending the black king, uh, and that's pretty much it. So Magnus doesn't go back, he accepts the knight, okay, e captures on f5, rook captures on e7, and now queen captures on b2, and it seems like, okay, you've defended, but not really. Uh, rook captures on f7, Queen to c1 check, bishop to f1, rook captures on f7, queen captures on f7, and here uh, Magnus realizes the horror of what he has done. Uh, now the threat is queen to f8, which will be checkmate, and also, uh, even if you don't checkmate the black king, uh, there's the problem of the hanging knight, and there's just no good way to handle this. If you play something like queen to h6, uh, just queen to e8 with check, and now king to g7, queen to e7 check, again, will win the knight, so there's no way to save the knight. Uh, so instead, after queen captures on f7, Magnus plays h5, but now queen to f8 with check, and a few more moves were played before Kamel uh, decided to, to capture that knight, queen to h8, queen captures on f6 with check, also why not grab a pawn while you're at it, king to g8, and now queen to d8 with check, king f7, queen to c7 with check, king e6, and now queen to b6 with check. Of course, the king cannot go to uh, d5, so king d7, and now queen captures on c5. And now Kamel is up a full bishop, uh, all that uh, is left is for him to win the game. Uh, so queen to b1, defending the b pawn, uh, and now queen to d5 with check. King to c8, and now Kamel just starts advancing his c pawn. c5, we have b3, pawn to c6, now threatening check and checkmate. King to c7, queen to d7, check, king to b6, and pawn to c7. Now the other queen is coming into the game. b2, uh, c8 with queen, and now queen captures on f1. Magnus grabs the bishop to, gain, uh, to get uh, the queen into the game with tempo. King captures on f1, and b1, queen with check king g2 and now magnus's only hope uh, is to find some sort of a perpetual queen to e4 check f3 queen to e2 check king to h3 and it was in this position on move 44 that magnus carlson resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here uh, once you give one more check after king to h4 there are no more checks and now black king will just get checkmated in in one or two moves
Uh, so yeah, uh, really uh, spectacular play by by Kamel, who who played uh, a brilliant chess for the entire game, and basically the only opportunity that Magnus gave him this queen to d4 move, uh, he took advantage of knight to f5 is the only winning move, and that's just it. And also, like I said, uh, I I haven't uh, seen his course on chessable, but I have seen the intro that that he made where he talks about uh, what's going on there. So I don't know if he actually covered the b5 move. Uh, maybe he has. Uh, but uh, either way, he uh, really did well against uh, against world champion Magnus Carlsen and uh, what a nice victory. And I think uh, Magnus was undefeated uh, until this game, or not just undefeated, he was on 100% uh, in the tournament before losing this game to Kamel in round four, as these are the standings of the uh, Mr. Dodgy Invitational. So you can see Magnus finished uh, the first day uh, with 11 uh, and a half uh, in first place, uh, followed by Daniel Dubo with 11, then Ralf Mamedo with 10 and a half, and so on and so on uh, 16 very very uh, impressive players here so if you have a favorite of your own uh, uh, from the tournament if there was a nice game because so many games were played uh, do uh, use hashtag suggestion and i will go over it and uh, hopefully uh, show it but yeah i mean uh, very nicely done by kamal uh, taking down magnus who is over 400 rating points higher rated than him uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you know your opening, chances are you will defeat very strong players uh, like Kamil did here. So uh, once again, big congratulations. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ahmed Youssef, Anup Akihal, uh, Clothesbox, Buntiak Pang, and Ravishing Reptiles YouTube for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.